everybody, welcome back. So we're finally jumping into that magical car cycle and figure out why in the world do we even care about this car no cycle? Well, first off, what in the world is it? Well, it's composed of four totally magically reversible processes, which means no friction, no heat loss, no loss of nothing. And so that's going to be isothermal heat addition, isentropic expansion, isothermal heat rejection, and then isentropic compression. Now, if you look at that, you see a whole lot of isa, isothermal, isentropic, isothermal, isentropic, which means, if I'm looking at a TS diagram, a whole bunch of straight lines. Which is why the TS diagram is just glorious when you're looking at it for a Carnot cycle. PV diagram, not so much. Now, this is the maximum efficiency cycle we can possibly have. Um, However, the reason we don't really use it in real life is because actual cycles, we can't make them run like this. They look something more like this. And so we don't use a Carnot cycle for anything besides figuring out the maximum thermal efficiency, which comes out to be one minus my lower temperature over my higher temperature. The heat at which I reject, T low, and the heat at which I input energy, T high. Now, where does this come from? Well, it's not too bad. Now, we learned a while ago that this right here is where a cycle looks like, and our equation for thermal efficiency was network over heat in. And that hasn't changed. So right here, this area of the cycle, that is my network. And that'll be T high minus T low times DS. You know, this DS right here is the distance from here to here. Now, the area under the top and as a note, if I had lines like this, it would be the area under every single line along the top. That's the heat addition. So that would be T high over dS. Now, if I take my network, which is T high minus T low over dS, divided by the heat addition, I get 1 minus T low over T high. There it is. There's your thermal efficiency. We've got our equation. So we're still using the same equation. And works out really well. And this is always the max upper limit to efficiency for any um, cycle whatsoever that's running between these two temperatures. Okay. Now, what we see here for looking at this is that my thermal efficiency is going to go up as I have a decrease in the temperature at which I reject or an increase at the temperature at which I input energy. My question for you is, why? Like, why is that the case? Well, the answer is pretty simple if you think about it. Physics. Just drop the mic, you can leave it there. Okay, okay I'm not going to do that to you, I promise, I promise it. Okay, so let's look at it here. The big thing here is not what the temperatures are, but the difference. I need a big difference, which will make a it's very, very small ratio. I want to have as small ratio as possible. The reason for that is because T high is simply a matter of how much energy I have, okay? The larger T high is, the bigger the circle is. So I've got a big T high, and I've got a small T high. That's simply saying I've got a whole bunch of energy, or I've got a little bit of energy, okay? whole bunch of energy or a little bit of energy. T low then is simply saying what fraction of that energy do I have to reject? Because I have to reject some energy at the end, I'm rejecting it at the same temperature as wherever my T low is. So the smaller my T low is, the smaller portion of my energy I'm wasting, because that is wasted. If I have my engine, I have energy going in, the energy going out if I could make it zero, it would be amazing. If I could make this zero, I would have a perfectly efficient system. I just can't do that. Now you're like, okay, well, why don't we just make our lowest temperature zero? Well, then you realize is that this is T low on an absolute scale, okay? This is not a relative scale of Celsius or um, Fahrenheit. And since that's an absolute scale, I would have to go to absolute zero to waste no energy, which doesn't happen anywhere in space. Like, honestly, heat engines in space could be very, very efficient, technically, if I could reject all the heat at zero, um, zero Kelvin. 
Now here's the last reason that T low is never absolute zero. I just can't do it. I can't get all the energy out of the system. No matter how much energy I have, there's always going to be some fraction that I'm unable to use. And yes, that is based on what temperature I'm projecting at, but even if I had super cold temperatures, it's not necessarily possible for me to get all of that energy out. Because there's always irreversibilities, there's always um, air resistance and friction, other things that are going to be making it so that I'm losing some of the energy along the way and having to reject it as heat. So that is why we can never get a 100% efficient system. It will never happen. We can try, and we're getting more and more efficient systems as we go, but there's always going to be some energy wasted. But we're trying to do the best we can, so typically things we can make sure happen is we can increase our temperature that we're inputting energy in to a point. This is mostly based on material. Because if I'm building it out of plastic, well, I can't have T high be very high. If I'm building out of metal, it can be higher. Ceramic, even higher. So as I go there, I might be able to have more efficient engines. And it's why you don't typically have a plastic engine. <laughs> okay, that's it for this time. Next time, we're going to jump into an example. So I'll see you all in a bit. Have a good day. Bye-bye.